The National Eucharistic Congress has come to an end with tens of thousands of Catholics headed back home after almost a week packed with adoration, liturgies, talks, and Eucharistic revival events. I have a very special guest on today who is there for all of it. Sarah Yaklik is the Chief Digital Officer for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and was at the Congress with our own Joe Garcia and other members of the eCatholic team. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks, Mike. It's great to be here with you. It's great to have you. Uh, so Sarah, tell us a little bit about your experience at the Congress and what did it mean to you to be a part of this event? You know, I mean, when you sit back and think that there were, the numbers now are saying actually closer to 60,000, not even wow. 50,000, but 60,000 engaged Catholics gathered in one area just to praise the Lord, to gather together as community and to celebrate our faith. It really truly is a remarkable moment, historic moment in the life of the church. And, you know, I just feel so blessed and gifted to have been there, um, especially with my team, with members of eCatholic. We were on the ground capturing stories, capturing photos, capturing video, really trying to bring the experience to life. And that is something that I will always take with me in life as, you know, one of my favorite experiences, definitely professionally, but also personally. That's beautiful. And I think we have some of those photos we showed. Uh, for those that watched our other wrap up videos, you'll have seen some of these, but there are some new ones sprinkled. Uh, so keep your eyes posted for those. Uh, Sarah, what was it like adoring our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament with, well, you said it now, 60,000 other Catholics? Yeah. You know, I have this really beautiful um, memory from the opening session, and the energy was high, right? This is the first day of the National Eucharistic Congress. People are like, they just had flown to the city. They got the registration tags. They're, they're in um, Lucas Oil for the first time. And all four um, pilgrim groups who came, so from the Marion route, the Sarah route, the energy was high, right? We welcomed them into the stadium. The, the graphics, dynamic, music was blasting. I mean, the energy, it was packed and alive. And then all of a sudden, Bishop Cousins walks in with Jesus in the Eucharist and complete silence. Hmm. All the graphics on the staging all went to black. A light shone on Jesus in the Eucharist and everybody dropped to their knees and just welcomed the Lord. And in that moment, I thought, well, there definitely is no confusion in this room about the true presence of Jesus, because it really was people recognize that that is Jesus and they just gave their hearts to the, him and then let them be fed and pure silence and down on their knees. We're talking kids, the elderly, just in complete adoration. And I thought, OK, this is a moment that says that we believe like, yes, amen, Lord, we believe that you are there and we believe that you could heal us and, and love us like nobody else can. That's so beautiful. And Joe was describing that as well. He was actually taking photos during that moment. There's one right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he noticed everyone um, was, was enjoying, happy, uh, making noise. Um, and then as soon as adoration began, as soon as our Lord entered, uh, his back was turned. So he, as he was taking photos, he'd noticed everyone immediate silence down mm -hmm. on their knees. And he mm -hmm. described that as being very beautiful as well. Yeah. So you might have just described it, but were there any moments at the Congress that really stood out to you? You know, I honestly think I'm still kind of discerning and like taking everything in, reliving everything. Um, but I think for me, like I, I didn't go to diff many of the sessions. Um, we were often like capturing stories, interviewing people. But I think honestly, for me, looking back at that, just that opportunity to capture individual testimonies and stories, I think for me, that's what is probably remains as a, a you know, a high um, a takeaway, right? Because I got to really sit in the vulnerability of people and, and hold, you know, their stories and then create with my team them in a beautiful way so we could share them with the world. And so what a gift it is, right? The church exists to evangelize and evangelization is about communication. And so be able to like capture these stories and share is so beautiful, right? Because one person's story may connect to another per person's story and someone else's perspective may inspire another perspective or a new way of thinking. So really being able to hold stories and hold experiences and then to bring those to life and share them so other people can encounter and experience them is just such, such a beautiful, a beautiful gift. And I'm sure you're still editing, but do you have a time frame on when those stories will be available and also where folks can see 
can see them once they're published. Yeah, so we already have on our LA Catholic websites. I think website. I think we have already about fifteen videos up already. Uh, we were turning them around daily, um, and so every day we were kind of sharing recap videos and testimony videos, um, and so we were sharing them real time. But our goal is just like the revival can't stay in Indianapolis, like at that moment. It's also the truth that like we want to keep this going, right? To keep the energy going, to keep the reflection going. So our plan is to keep sharing testimonies and stories and moments that we've shared, you know, throughout the summer, just to keep that energy um, and inspiration alive, right? Because it's one thing to have a beautiful event, and it's another thing to take that event and then shape how we live as Catholics in the world. And so our hope is that this is not just, you know, an experience in Indianapolis that changed our life, but it's an event that will keep changing in our keep changing our lives um, and keep um, inspiring us to live holy lives and, and be those missionaries that are changing the world. And that website is lacatholic.com. Dot org. Mm -hmm. dot org, dot org. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So folks can go there to start seeing those stories. Mm -hmm. um, you already hinted at this, but what do you hope will be the lasting impact of this Congress? So I really do think that what will be beautiful about this conference is that it will inspire us to to be missionary disciples, right? It's I think part of the um, the challenge that we see, especially you know, for someone like me or, or e Catholic members of working in the world or our parish staff, sometimes it's really hard to or it's easy to feel disheartened, right? We see low mass attendance numbers, or we see you know our faith just not being honored in the world, and so it could be very disheartening. But I think what this event has shown is that the church is very much alive and the church is alive and ready to do radical things for the world. And so I think the lasting effect of this is going to be once everyone gets home into their diocese, into their parishes, in their families, in their communities, and really find the courage to, to be those evangelizers, to talk about our friendship with Jesus, to, to look at the moments that we have to evangelize, all those little moments. It doesn't have to be big, grandiose moments, right? The Lord doesn't ask us, as Mother Teresa says, to be faithful. I mean, to be successful, only faithful, right? And so all we're called to do is to share about that friendship with him. And, and the more we do that, the more we, we change the world, right? If 50,000 people tell one person about their friendship with Jesus, and then those 50,000 tell another 50,000, I mean, that's how the world, you know, knows about, about our Lord, right? I mean, Jesus started with 12 apostles, and here we are today, thousands of years later. Like, what will history say about us as Catholics in a thousand years? I hope that they look, we look back and say, this was a pivotal moment in the life of our church, and we in the United States started taking our faith even more seriously and really just set the world on fire with the truth that we know of Jesus in the Eucharist. That's beautiful. Um, E-Catholic and the Archdiocese of Los Angeles announced the launch of findamass.org during the Congress. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about the partnership with E-Catholic and also the Back to Mass initiative? Yeah, it's something that I, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm so excited about and just praying so hard that it really helps our, our community. So in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, right after COVID, we recognized our digital team that we had to do something, right? We had spent years building up live streams, building up websites, getting people connected that way, just to build some type of community when we were isolated and alone, right? And, you know, then we start, churches started opening and we saw the numbers not where they should be. And so we were like, we need to address this, right? This is something serious. So we launched a back to mass um, campaign and we designed little kits that had everything from um, soft evangelization tools. So buttons and stickers that were like a, a, our logo that looked beautiful, an invitation card where someone could actually handwrite someone to know and invite them to mass. Um, a bracelet from my saint, my hero that had a QR code that led them to mass times in the archdiocese. And it worked, right? The whole idea was this concept that speak one-to-one, -one, do one invitation. Um, and then we realized, well, if this is working in Los Angeles, let's improve this. Let's improve this for our Los Angeles community. Um, and as Archbishop Gomez always says, he challenges us. He, he, he makes sure that we stretch our bounds in the digital arena to really use the tools as best as we can to bring others to Jesus. And so we sat back and thought, okay, we're at this moment in life of the church where the nation is going to be gathered. The U.S. bishops are inviting us to walk with one. That's kind of their initiative out of Congress. Who can you walk with along their faith journey? 
And then we thought, let's take back to Mass National. Um, and so we partnered with eCatholic to find to develop um, a, a Mass Finder. And it's beautiful because the technology that eCatholic has created, it's phenomenal. You have access on your mobile device, Mass times, confession times, adoration, right where you are. So no matter where you are, you're able to find the closest church near you. Um, and so it's just exciting that we could take something that started locally in Los Angeles um, and then improve for our local community, but then gift that to the church in the United States. And we really just hope that it's something that is going to, to catch and, and grow. Yeah, and we brought up the site here uh, so folks can see it. This is the findamass.org, findamass.org. Um, if anybody wants to go there, search for your own parishes uh, as well. Um, we've had lots of users um, use it since the announcement. We've been keeping a, a look. Um, we've been keeping an eye on that data. So it's great to see it already being um, utilized um, for mass times. And as you mentioned, also confession and adoration times. And it's um, really fast. Yeah. It's really fascinating, Mike. When we we were at we were, we handed out over five thousand kits um, at our booth in the exhibit hall, and what was really um, it was powerful and perhaps even emotional is that when people were coming to the booth, they all had in mind who they wanted to give the kits to, and many times there were people in in tears. Like I remember, mm -hmm. you know, this one man he just started crying and he said. I'm just so tired of my wife not coming to mass with me. He's like, I love her with all my heart. I love Jesus with all my heart. And I don't know how to, you know, bring her back. And he said, I stopped inviting her. And he said, why did I stop? He's like, I haven't asked her in years. And he said, so now I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to invite her and pray that the Holy Spirit will enable her to say yes. But it was just so powerful to see that this is not just something, you know, that a, something, a campaign we're creating. This is a campaign that's designed to really walk with people who are wounded and hurting because their loved ones are away from the Lord. And so it's just great to be able to marry technology, um, evangelization tools together just to try to bring people closer to the heart of Jesus. That's such a beautiful testimony. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be so many more um, now that you mentioned these resources mm -hmm. have have uh, been opened up to all the dioceses and archdiocese across the United States. And where can a parish or a diocese that's interested go to learn more about the Back to Mass campaign? Yes, yeah, so we have um, a back, back to mass .com. Um, That is a campaign website that has some resources. Um, and also there's a link right on that website, uh, back to mass.com slash invite. And you can actually order um, a kit. So you could order um, a kit and then there's information. Some parishes are reaching out to us already asking, can we order in bulk? Like they're, they're really, they're asking for that. And, and in Los Angeles, it did work. We, you know, confirmation classes have used it. And, you know, we have this one store of a, a sixth grader asking his mom, um, writing her a note on the little card, handing it to her and asking her to come to church with him because he only went to church at during his Catholic school time. They never went on the weekends. And she felt so moved that her son, her sixth grader, realized how special and sacred that was that she said yes to going that night to that mass. And now they're going every week. Right. So the tools, it just the tools are there just as a means to help and support. But really, it's inside each one of us. We have the, the power and the beauty to, to do that um, invitation and and do it on behalf of, you know, the Lord. You know, all we want is to bring more people um, to heaven with him. That's beautiful. So LACatholic.org, back to mass.com and find a mass.com and dot org, I believe, as well are where folks can go to learn more about everything we talked here. That's right. And we have um, them all integrated, right? So wherever you are, you get to one of those websites, we'll get you there. And we will drop those links as well into the descriptions for wherever this is disseminated across social media. Well, Sarah, I'm so glad that you had um, such a beautiful, inspiring time at the Congress. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for all the great work that you're doing in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Yeah, and special thanks to eCatholic. We're really grateful. eCatholic has really supported our parishes. Um, a majority of our parishes use the platform and really has helped them. Um, and I'm just really grateful for this collaboration um, regarding Back to Mass and the Mass Finder. And I think there's some beautiful things ahead. So a special thanks to eCatholic and everyone there who works so hard to, to serve us um, and, and the church at large. So thank you. Thank you for that, Sarah. And folks can obviously get to know eCatholic a little bit better at eCatholic.com as well. Thank you for saying that, Sarah. Well, with that, um, have a good rest of your afternoon. And um, thanks again for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. All right. God bless.